Welcome to Coulter Holmes Inside World Pickleball Show, a weekly program featuring the sports lifestyle and action on and off the court of the fastest growing sport in America, pickleball. Hello, everybody. I'm Carl Foster. And I'm Melissa McCurley. Welcome to this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball. All the pickleball on and off the court. Coming up on this week's show, we'll feature the 2021 APP Tour kickoff event at Punta Gorda's Pickleplex as the pros and amateurs are dinking and banging in the new year. I'm just really excited to be back on the court. It's really a void, you know, so just excited to be back. Tyson, what about you? Uh, you were pretty active in 2020. Yeah, so 2020 I probably played, uh, shoot, six or seven tournaments um, and started my own camp company, started a podcast. I, I got pretty active and pretty busy over quarantine, uh, did about 150 instructional videos. So on the business end, got really busy, got myself organized. Uh, yeah, playing-wise, played six or seven tournaments. Super excited for 2021. We'll formally introduce our co-host, Melissa McCurley, and why she's known as the first lady of pickleball, running pickleballtournaments.com. You've got a lot of people coming in, uh, people vying to be able to make a living uh, at pickleball. You've got you know amateur players here playing with the professional players, so you can get people playing side by side. So it creates an energy and excitement when, you know, seven years ago, energy and excitement was on eight courts with 200 players. Now an 800 player tournament is, you know, what we're starting to see as the norm in venues that can handle it. A preview of the next big pro-am and team event coming in February at Punta Gorda with the World Pickleball Championships. The registration is open. As a matter of fact, we would like to um, ask amateurs to support uh, this tournament because there are not many tournaments like this where you can play and really watch the best players in the world. Our tournament players spotlight this week showcases a military and fitness partnership. Um, I've been playing for five years. Uh, my dad taught me the game five years ago uh, out in Fort Bragg. He was, he's, he's a veteran army and I never stopped playing. I love it, absolutely love it. Um, I work for Orange Theory Fitness and I also teach my own little workout class online. Um, yeah, and I personally train people at their house. So fitness all around. And we'll help improve your game with the Engage Pickleball Tip of the Week from national champion Steve Kennedy. All this and more to come on the Coulter Homes Inside World Pickleball Show. This week's show is presented by North Point Bank, relationship-based banking, your number one choice for home loans and high-interest savings. And PGA Village Verano, the award-winning gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Shopping for a new home in Port St. Lucie? Start your search at PGAVillageVerano.com. Discover a resort-style community by Coulter Homes, featuring social and fitness clubhouses, award-winning homes and villas, championship golf next door, a 55-plus neighborhood, and South Florida's largest private pickleball center. See virtual tours and build your dream home online with interactive floor plans at PGAVillageVerano.com. North Point Bank works to be a different kind of bank, with you at the center of everything we do. We customize products and services using a client-focused approach, which means listening and then delivering on quality solutions for our home lending clients. Whether that's a low down payment for first-time home buyers, alternative financing solutions for self-employed borrowers, or streamlined construction options to build the home of your dreams, we've got a solution for you. Connect with the Brandt team, your local lending experts at North Point Bank, to learn more. Welcome back to Inside World Pickleball, and our cover story this week features the kickoff of the professional pickleball season as the USA Pickleball-sanctioned APP Tour, headed up by Ken Herman, had a sold-out field of amateurs and pros at the Pickleplex in Punta Gorda last weekend. The event was closed to spectators following COVID-19 safe and healthy guidelines. We are taking COVID guidelines very seriously. We closed this event as well, so all players were allowed to bring in one guest, and we're monitoring it with all the COVID guidelines that the APP Tour takes into place. The whole vision and dream of the APP Tour this year is taking that road to the Miami Open. Um, players are trying to qualify to get there. If you're an amateur, you would need to play in two events and finish in the top 50 of your standings. And then if you're a pro, you have to play four events on the APP Tour and then also qualify in the top 50. But that's just going to be a, an exciting event that we're going to kick off, or I'm sorry, finish off the end of the year that year. And uh, all things are just always wild and crazy in Miami, no doubt about that. Yeah. 
And there's uh, now I know this year there's also talks that you may expand more events. We know pickleball is growing by leaps and bounds. If we get the COVID situation settled down and people can travel, uh, what areas of growth you see pickleball now that you want to take the APP tour to? Sure, that's a great question. With our partnership with USA Pickleball, the whole goal is continuing to try to grow the sport as best as we can. We're looking at taking a segment up the East Coast this year. We're going to announce probably in the next coming weeks about how we're going to be taking part of the tour heading up the East Coast and just trying to bring that APP experience to some cities that just haven't experienced this type of an event before. National champion Lee Waters played her first event since COVID entered the world last March 2020, teaming up with Tyson McGuffin in mixed and her daughter Anna Lee in ladies doubles. I know with the quarantine, I know over the you haven't played a lot of tournaments yourself over the last uh, in 2020, but just uh, review 2020 a little bit and then what you're looking for for 2021. Yeah, 2020 for us, we stayed home uh, due to family concerns and kind of took a break, but we worked on a lot of things that um, I think needed some work. And uh, coming back, planning on playing a tournament every month, playing with this guy later in the year as well. And um, I don't know, just really excited to be back on the court. It's really a void, you know, so... Tyson, what about you? Uh, you were pretty active in 2020. Yeah, so 2020, I probably played, uh, shoot, six or seven tournaments um, and started my own camp company, started a podcast. I, I got pretty active and pretty busy over quarantine, uh, did about 150 instructional videos. So on the business end, got really busy, got myself organized. Uh, yeah, playing-wise, played six or seven tournaments. It's kind of a weird year. Um, obviously, no no spectators, temperatures at the front, you know, wearing your mask in between matches and stuff like that. But uh, super excited for 2021. I want all this stuff to go away, as with everybody else. But, um, yeah, I think we have, I don't know, five or six this year. And then I'm playing some with Anna Lee as well. So super happy for 2021. Adam Stone had a successful opening event, teaming up with Corinne Carr to take the mixed doubles gold and also joining Steve Deacon for another medal. What's your schedule looking like for 2021? This is sort of the kickoff of the season here with the APB Tour event. And you got a heavy schedule coming up? Uh, I would say that heavy might even be an understatement. I got, I got somewhere in the, I think it's like 26 or so uh, tournaments that I play on playing uh, you know I'm getting getting up there in age I got to get my wins now so I'm going I'm going all in with the tournaments the next couple years and uh, before all these youngsters come in start whooping my butt so what's what's the experience lending to with all the youngsters coming in we talk about the two I talked to Steve Deacon you know you guys are the veterans and you've been around a lot longer sure. so how do you battle uh, the Ben Johns and the, and the Kyle Yates and some of the guys in their 20s and even even younger when you're out there uh, you're battling away it's 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 certainly not easy I guess just uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, my life experiences make me a little smarter on the court, but I don't even know if I believe that. Uh, so uh, it, it's definitely not easy. Just got to play, play solid. You know, try to try to keep your body healthy and uh, 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 battle it out with some of those athletic youngsters for sure. How do you how do you choose your partners? You're playing with Corinne Carr in the mixed doubles. Uh, you playing men doubles? You still playing singles as well? Uh, no, I, I I started my uh, singles was uh, I had some of my best results early on, but I've, I've kind of put it in the back pocket. Uh, with, like I said, with, with with some of the deeper draws and uh, some of the tougher competition, it's it's really hard to make it through three events. So so I've I've kind of dropped uh, singles for men's doubles and mixed doubles, and and I'm happy with that. <laughs>
Inside World Pickleball. Carl Foster with my co-host, Willis McCurley, in person at Punta Gorda at the Pickleplex in beautiful, sunny Florida. A little windy today. Had a little bit of rain, but Melissa, with PickleballTournaments.com, you've got your hands full today with uh, always delays. Makes, makes it interesting for you at these tournaments, doesn't it? Yeah, first of all, it's great to be here with you finally in person, Carl. Uh, exciting, great to be here in Florida. We did start off today, uh, it seems to be the theme of the APP Tour, to have some kind of rain to deal with. So it rained overnight last night. We had about an hour and a half delay getting play started, but now the sun's out. It's beautiful. Some fantastic matches going on here at Punta Gorda at the beautiful Pickleplex. Well, let our audience know a little bit about Melissa McCurley and your history with pickleball because we met about a little over a year ago at the World Pickleball Open, but you've been involved with pickleball for quite some time. I'm a, I'm a newbie, but you're, you're the professional, you're the experience, you've seen the sport grow for the last six, seven years or more, but uh, just where are we in 2021? I mean, uh, over the years, and if you can put a, a quick flash perspective into where, when you started, mm -hmm. to where we're at now. Yeah, well, I am an old timer now, right? So <laughs> <You're> a <veteran. laughs> I'm a veteran. I've been around for a little while. Been been around almost seven years now when I came into the pickleball scene if you will from an industry perspective I came in as the owner of pickleballtournaments.com which is something I had purchased my brother and I from mr. Bob Lanius who created at pickleballtournaments.com he's now in the pickleball hall of fame um, at that time there were 93 tournaments that were running uh, around the country the next year 130 the next year 250 the next year 400 and then uh, last year we ended at around 800 we expected to hit a thousand when corona virus came, so that certainly uh, changed the world, had a huge impact on the ev event business. Um, but as we were growing uh, through the process of PickleballTournaments.com in 2018, we were getting so large, we were acquired by Pickleball Central. And so I was uh, merged my interest into my company with Pickleball Tournaments uh, into Pickleball Central and uh, became one of five owners. And now uh, I'm the president of PickleballTournaments.com, continuing to grow the business. Uh, my brother um, actually it was... Um, bought out at that time and he stayed on with us for about a year and the rest of that is also history so um, I've seen the pro tour develop uh, since I've been on I mean back in when I came on the only really prize money type event was the tournament of champions founded by mr. John Gullo uh, he was the first prize money tournament and then nationals you know came along and started offering money uh, and then here you know in 2020 come these two professional tours so uh, it's changed the game. You've got a lot of people coming in, uh, people vying to be able to make a living uh, at pickleball. You've got you know amateur players here playing with the professional players, so you can get people playing side by side. So it creates an energy and excitement when you know seven years ago energy and excitement was on eight courts with 200 players. Now an 800 player tournament is you know what we're starting to see as the norm in venues that can handle it. Well, that's the thing. The venues that are growing, we've seen every day. I'm looking at it. I'm getting an article like Austin, Texas is building 32 courts. There's 16 courts here, 20. So it looks like the demand for pickleball is there. And in a lot of areas, the demand isn't being met because so they're turning tennis courts into pickleball courts and, and they're building new complexes like this, 16 courts. And it looks like they're going to expand this another 16 or more, right? Yeah, they would have to expand just like, you know, Ken Herman, who's the director of the APP tour. Um, there were 16 courts here. We have about 596 players playing. We could have had another 300 if we would have had the capacity. So that just tells you the demand is there. Um, it's estimated that about 250,000 new players have come into pickleball during the year of COVID. And those people quickly then want to become competitors. And so the venues actually can't keep up with the demand of the need and desire to want to compete. So venues are going to continue to be an issue if they build them. The pickleball players will definitely come. How many tournaments are you doing this year? I mean, have you, do you have a full schedule? I do have a full <laughs> schedule. Right now I am committed to 17, and I have three more that uh, I could be committing to. So. Well, we know we'll have cameras rolling wherever Melissa is. She will have a camera crew with that beautiful face shining out there and exploring the world of pickleball. And uh, we look forward to that. Uh, we'll be one place. She'll be another. Some points will be together. But Delray Beach will be together. So maybe some other tournaments as well. So we look forward to a, a great year of pickleball together. I'm looking forward to it as well. I couldn't be more thrilled to be part of the Inside World Pickleball Show, Carl, with you and spreading the joy and love of pickleball to so many viewers around the world, bringing in more people to the most special game, the most socially connected connected game and the game that changes lives in a bigger way than anything I've ever been involved with before. One thing the COVID virus has made an impact on is the registration process and scheduling process of court assignments. 
And Melissa McCurley, president of PickleballTournaments.com, has the barcode solution. We have put something new into the tournament operations process. A lot of that was driven from COVID uh, to where we had paper brackets that were on site. Uh, we also had television monitors that were on cut site for court assignments. And all of those things were just areas that people would congregate in large numbers. And so what we've done now, and we're doing this at all the APP tour events, is we have QR codes where the players can find out information about the brackets that they're playing in, their court assignments. They can also see their schedule. They can text information back to the tournament desk. They can also email information to us as well. In addition, we also have a texting capability that we're texting all of the court assignments out to the players as well. Uh, that's allowed us to um, not have to do announcements for matches, which has been a big deal for people who find that noise to be very distracting. So we're only making announcements on second calls if somebody doesn't uh, answer a particular text. So we actually have these posted all over the venue in the player lounges, at the restrooms. And it's been a real nice uh, innovation in addition uh, to the tournament that allows people to stay separated while getting information to them in a very personal manner. This new process will be part of the APP Tour at all their 2021 events. Next stop will be the Delray Beach Pickleball Open in March, where senior pro Steve Kennedy, along with Lee and Anna Lee Waters, will be the pro host. I mean, we've been saying since we started playing pickleball that the Delray Beach Tennis Center is the perfect location for a major pickleball event. It's just the, the energy, that big stadium, you know, knowing that there's pro tennis tournaments there, kind of like Indian Wells. Um, so many courts right on Atlantic Avenue where there's great restaurants and shops. It's just the perfect location great weather. Um, so we're super pumped that not only now there is a big money tournament, but we get to host it and be a real big part of it. So we're excited. It should be the last, very last tournament of the year where basically all the best pros are invited and based on global pickable ranking, which uh, gives another legitimacy to, to the tournament and basically the winner will be pronounced as a world champion. So it will be the first day, it starts at 1 o'clock and it will be 18 matches, um, single matches, uh, singles and doubles matches and there are basically two teams, Team World and Team uh, USA. Um, both of the teams will have a very top pro players. Um, the event will be sectioned into three sections uh, with basically the, the best players all the way at the end. We are assuming that uh, the, the competition will be tough. Uh, both teams are very good and they are all very pumped up. Now we've got the World Pickleball Championships coming up. We're working with, uh, with your father. It's a great tournament. they got the team competition as well as the three other matches. So how do you like the, the team competition of playing the rapid fire uh, pickleball? Oh, I'm so pumped. Team World, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> you are Team World, that's right. <laughs> And Steve Deacon's team, he was yes. talking all about you out there. So so that's going to be an exciting. Uh, it's, uh, the pros seem to like that format too, right? Yes, a lot of them. I mean, it's it's great because you see matchups like in doubles that you don't normally see in tournaments. So it's just really neat to see how people will do together. And who are you going to be playing with uh, in mixed uh, and ladies doubles? So in the team competition, yeah. I'll be playing with uh, Lee Whitwell, women's doubles, and then singles. So I, I don't have a mixed, but that's okay. I'll have a mix in the tournament. <laughs> right, okay. Well, sounds great. Keep up the great work, and we'll look forward to seeing you in about another month. Yes, sir. Thank you so Thanks. much. <laughs> Discover the plus in 55 plus living at Crestwind Palm Beach. Located in Westlake, Florida's newest city, Crestwind Palm Beach is a fresh new home choice designed for the next generation. Crestwind Palm Beach is a 55 plus community for those who thrive on a happy, healthy life through fitness, nutrition, and relationships. Nine decorated models now open. To learn more about all the pluses Crestwind offers, visit CrestwindPalmBeach.com. That's CrestwindPalmBeach.com. North Point Bank works to be a different kind of bank, with you at the center of everything we do. 
We customize products and services using a client-focused approach, which means listening and then delivering on quality solutions for our home lending clients. Whether that's a low down payment for first-time home buyers, alternative financing solutions for self-employed borrowers, or streamlined construction options to build the home of your dreams, we've got a solution for you. Connect with the Brandt team, your local lending experts at North Point Bank, to learn more. World Pickleball at the Punta Gorda Pickleplex here for the APB Tour event and just coming off the courts, Jay Campbell, a military active duty member and also uh, Monica Pellicelli teaming up here in Mixed Doubles on a Mixed Doubles Thursday. So first of all, Jay, let's talk about uh, your background. How long have you been playing pickleball? Um, I've been playing for five years. Uh, my dad taught me the game five years ago uh, out in Fort Bragg. He was, he's, he's a veteran Army and I never stopped playing. I love it, absolutely love it. So is this a sport that's really active? I'm a, I'm a vet myself, so is this active in the military now? A lot of you guys playing? I'm trying to get the guys to play, starting it up a little bit, but we'll see, we'll see. And uh, how'd you guys team up as far as uh, partnerships? Have you played before? Um, no, we've never actually played together. We've scheduled lots of tournaments, but they've been canceled. Um, but we're both on Team Gamma, so, um, and I knew Jay Sean, he lived in uh, South Carolina, now he's in Florida, but um, I live in Virginia, so. We've scheduled a few, but never that's our first we've played together. That's great. So it's you know it's a great sport. You know I play myself. So just to see the competition, uh, do you guys get butterflies when you play tournaments? Or you've been playing tournaments long enough now that you, it doesn't bother you? I still get some butterflies, maybe the first match. But after the first match, I get into a groove and I'm I'm pretty good. Yep. Is the wind any factor today? I know the wind's always in pickleball. It's a challenge. Total challenge. Uh, basically, you want to aim for the center of the court at all times and not. You know, go for too much, like unfortunately we did, and um, yeah, keep the ball in play is the main thing. I was having trouble with uh, my dinking game, being patient enough before I, I do go for the drive. So, is that something you're always working on as far as resetting, battle the dinks, winning the dinks? I think at a higher level, you have to know how to dink and reset, uh, especially with the guys bringing some pace. You got to be able to get to the kitchen and reset and dink. What's your biggest challenge uh, in pickleball now? And it's a sport you keep learning, you keep playing more and so forth. But what have you found the most challenging thing right now to, to keep improving your game? Um, it's finding the competition to play against. And then also, once you get to that 5-0 level, it becomes extremely hard to work your way up. Um, and it's playing against the best. And we unfortunately don't have that in our area. So we travel down here to Florida. And so once you get to 5-0 and up, it's a lot of work. Yeah, how do you pick a partner? Do you guys look for anybody specifically, you know, as far as to match your game, to compensate your game, to have the same chemistry? Honestly, I pick my partners from watching them in tournaments. I might face someone that I like, and then, you know, I'll find them on <laughs> social media, whatnot, you know, and ask, and they say yes or they say no. And that's how I really, that's how I get a partner. Mm -hmm. Monica, what do you do for a living besides uh, play, play pickleball? Um, I work for Orange Theory Fitness, and I also teach my own little workout class online. Um, yeah, and I personally train people at their house, so fitness all around. Right, we do go. a nice little warm-up, three-mile <laughs> run. There you go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> all right, we'll let you get back at it, guys. Hey, uh, thanks for talking to you. Thank, Thank you, sir. It's time for the Engage Pickleball Tip of the Week with Senior Championship Pro Steve Kennedy. Hi peeps. Okay, we're talking a little bit about when you should come in and when you shouldn't. Look, ultimately, it's your goal to get to the kitchen line. But I always tell my, my, my students that it's kind of like having a burning building and do you run into the fire or do you back away from the fire? And if there's no fire, then go into the building. So let's, let's determine if our shot is of quality. If you've hit a quality ball, you're gonna work your way in as far as you can. When your opponent is about to make contact with the ball, wherever you are on the court, you should be doing a split step, okay? I don't care if that didn't get you the kitchen line. You've gotta stop for a moment. You have gotta take an analysis of the situation and then react to what's coming off your opponent's paddle at that point, okay? When do we come in? I'm always looking to come in. But if I hit a, if I hit a drive or a drop that's not quality, I'm gonna start in, I'm gonna go, oh no, 
and I'm gonna put the brakes on, and I'm completely okay with you guys stopping in transition area. We're not calling this no man's land anymore. This is the land of opportunity or transition area. A lot of good things happen in here, and once in a while, bad things happen in here. But do not put getting to the kitchen line above hitting a quality ball. Once the ball has left your paddle, start working in. Recognize, is there a lot of fire or is there not a lot of fire? Okay. If it's hot, stop short. A hot shot is a ball that's going to sit up too high, something that your opponent can attack, and you're going to play a little bit more neutral or defensive at that point. So you're going to recognize your shot on the way in, do your split stop, and go from there. Now I will recommend by shot number five, I'm hoping that you've made it to the kitchen line, okay? Because if not, we need to go back and watch some of the other tips and how to learn to make our third shot drop or drive just a little bit better that enables us to get into that kitchen line a little bit faster. And that's this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball. I'm Carl Foster with Melissa McCurley. Carpe Dinkum. This week's show is presented by North Point Bank, relationship-based banking, your number one choice for home loans and high interest savings. And PGA Village Verano, the award-winning gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida.